Hello and welcome to Bilingual Analytics. My name is Roland and today I'm going to share with you some pro tips about Power BI report design. As the name of the video suggests, we are not going to create a complete report from scratch. It's more about three design ideas in Power BI. Honestly, the first two ideas are going to be a little bit more general design ideas that I suggest you to follow to create an easy to use and easy to understand report. And the last one in today's video is going to be something that I'm very passionate about. I know that many of you have already created and designed report in Excel, but I believe Power BI report design is and has to be significantly different. If you think about that, these two tools should be used differently. Excel is a spreadsheet while Power BI is a powerful data visualization tool. So the first to pick today, less is more. What do I mean by that? Let's head over to my machine. When Excel users make a switch to Power BI and start using Power BI as their reporting tool, many of them become a victim of over-visualizing a report page. A different or better explanation for that is a report like this. As you can see here, we have heaps of visuals on a single report page. Yes, it does contain lots of information that our users are probably looking for, but how easy it is to find the right visual immediately. What is the message that we want to communicate to our users? I guess if you train your eyes and spend more time with this report, you would know which visuals provide answers and additional value. But if a visual doesn't provide any additional value, why do we even have them here? In addition to all of that, there is no or very little white space. Don't be afraid of using white spaces in data visualization. Oftentimes I see report creators trying to cover every single pixel of the screen with information. It doesn't help in guiding our users' eyes. Keep in mind if it takes more than 5 to 10 seconds to find something on a report page, users will have a tendency of leaving the report. Now a quick solution might be to split these elements into multiple report pages. But again, less is sometimes more. If you create 20 report pages, you will have difficulties to remember what to find on each report page. Now, imagine if your users are going to face the same challenge. Are you sure that they will click through every single report page to find the information that they are looking for? One or two of them maybe, but the bulk of them are just simply going to ignore the whole report. So how do we break this vicious circle? I would suggest talking to your users. Make sure that you not just simply create a report that they asked for. Guide them with really good and useful design ideas. Sure, it would be great to have a single report to rule them all, but in reality, there is a limit on how much data our eyes can visually process. If you are aware of this, you can provide a much smoother user experience. And one more thing, please, do not create a dedicated report page for slicers. Sure, it sounds like a good idea, but let's be honest, if your users cannot see the interaction between slicers and report elements, they will be too afraid to slice and dice the report. The second topic is about knowing your audience. If you create a report for the finance team, you don't necessarily need lots of visual elements. In general, finance people like to see numbers. It doesn't mean that you just chuck in a massive table or matrix like this and Bob's your uncle. You still need to spend some time in designing the report, but through the eyes of a finance user. As you can see on this second finance team report, numbers still take up more than 50% of the screen. But as I said, we can spice up the finance report with some highlights or KPIs and guide the finance team on what's important to the business. If you plan to create a report for sales or operations, you have to try to hide your numbers. Make it more visually appealing and be sure that you have a message to share. Just by changing a table to a bar chart won't solve all of your problems. Try to think about why do they ask you to create this report? Is it about a certain business case? Are we losing money somewhere? Is it more about operational efficiency? 
In this case, it's all about increasing Funarzel presence and market share and guide our sales and ops team to find top districts within a blink of an eye. Finally, if you create a report or dashboard for management, you must create a page where key indicators are visible and understandable within a second. Management doesn't have the time to drill into the details and spend hours of finding what's wrong. They need to have a report to see high-level results. Whatever the topic might be, you can find the best visuals to go with that topic. Think about yourself as a storyteller rather than just a report creator. Most importantly, just allow yourself enough time to think about report design. You may not get it right at first, but that's all right. Practice, practice and practice. Even if you have a good design, some users will still ask for something different. And you have to understand this. There are finance people who would prefer more visuals and less numbers. And there are sales and ops people who prefer numbers. Just remember, your report should cater for the masses, not for the individual. To summarize what I just said before, talk to your users and not just the heavy users who already use Excel reports. With Power BI and data visualization, you can invite those non-tech or non-data savvy persons to enjoy numbers and reports. Just make sure that you guide them on how to use the report instead of teaching them how to create a pivot table. In many cases, management or key stakeholder buy-in is also essential. Once your design is approved by management, you can always refer those who are not happy with your design back to management. And here comes the last topic, the one that I'm most passionate about. Nope, not that matrix. I'm talking about the matrix visual. It is nothing more than a glorified Excel spreadsheet. When you design your report, try to avoid it. Let me repeat one of the previous sentences from this video. Excel is a spreadsheet, while Power BI is a data visualization tool. If you use a matrix, you just dump your data to your users. You're not helping them to understand more about what's critical and what's not. Also, there are no breadcrumbs that they can follow to the holy grail. Sure, there will be some users who like this and they will use Power BI as a data source and export reports to Excel. But is it really what you're trying to achieve? If your plan is to create a report that people can use in Excel, create that report in Excel. You can utilize Power Pivot, data modeling and even Power Query in Excel. But once again, think about what do you want to achieve. I'm not saying that there are no use cases for a table or for a matrix. However, I would much rather try to solve my visualization needs with some other elements rather than a matrix. I know in certain scenarios we must use the matrix. These guys are just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to Power BI report design. Remember, just because you created a report page with lots of visuals on it, there is no guarantee that the, your users are going to like it and find it easy to use. And if the users are not using your report, then what's the point of even creating it? Always talk to your users about their expectations, the way how they plan to use the report, and just in general, be aware of the different needs of the users. Believe me, you, your report, and your report users are going to benefit from following these steps. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something new about report design in Power BI. If you liked the video, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel so you never miss a new episode. Stay tuned and see ya!